Right guys, Mark Crossfield here, and today we're talking clearing your hips in the downswing. So can you successfully get out your own way? Like, do you use your hips or do you not? Is this something you've always struggled with? If it is, we're gonna delve deeper into why you might struggle with these ideas of clearing your hips, and even maybe why you shouldn't be clearing your hips, while at the same time some golfers definitely should work on getting those hips moving differently. So let's take the strong grip blocker and overturn it to kick us off. So seeing maybe all the knuckles on the left hand, right hand a little bit stuck under the club. So if I've got this strong grip, it's gonna to tend to make the club face want to turn. So a little bit this way. So I'm gonna to need to make sure I get my hand all way forward to try and compensate for that. And if I'm doing that with my hips, so I'm doing that with my horizontal pushing on the ground, I ain't gonna have much time for twisting and turning. Strong grip blockers. Let's go inside and see if we can get you working in a better way to help you using your hips. So we've got two fixes to help you. First fix, if you're the strong grip slider, is to ease the grip off. So rather than seeing all knuckles, you could quite easily go to two to two and a half to three knuckles on that lead hand. Right hand a little bit more on top of the club. Now with your hands in this position, the slide will not make sense you're gonna have to rotate to control the face, otherwise everything's going high right. Because your grip is basically doing that to the face, and then you're sliding that handle forwards to try and line things up. Which we can see here on Swing Cat. If I take myself down to my peak torque, so this is my peak force of torque in the downswing, it's uber, uber late. I would want this yellow bar peaking much more when my arm is parallel to the ground. Then in turn, my peak vertical, so this is me pushing out of the ground, is happening way down at the ball. So by now weakening your hand, your grip into a more neutral position, so weakening obviously because you were strong, I now have the right, the ability to be able to rotate. It's almost like unlocking the door. So what happens with students is you give them this idea of the weaker grip, they hate how it feels, it goes to the right, and you say to them, look, if you want it now not to go to the right, I'm gonna need you to start rotating more. And they do because they can. They can't rotate the way they want to when the grip is as strong as it is. Now they can because there's another way, which we're gonna talk about in a second. But this is option one. Calm your hold down to more neutral hold. Now you can stand to the ball, you could have your feet slightly open at address and do everything you can to get left hip out of the way. It will make sense, it will become functional. You'll want to do it. Now there's plenty of good golfers on tour who use strong grips and play really well. And I've seen plenty of amateurs who also use strong grips and it works to their advantage. So if you wanna keep the strong grip, but get those hips rotating more. So if we look at the lack of hip clearance here, Compared to this impact position, now we see the peak torque. So I'm increasing my torque and I'm increasing my vertical and peaking it earlier. So the blue one here where the club's still up in the air. So by getting people to think of using the ground in a more three dimensional way, allows them to manage the grip and the face and improve strikes. So that second swing, still got the same strong grip, not changed the grip. But what I've done is rather than think of weight shift as more of a right and a left movement, a 2D movement, I've included right and left, naturally, forwards and backwards, so towards this wall and towards the back wall, and into the ground and up. So I'm starting to think of moving my weight more in three dimensions. Simple drill to get feeling. So what I want you to do is turn the club face slightly down to the ground, because remember you're a strong gripper and you trying to control this face with your slide, but I want you to take the slide out and get some rotations. So split your hands on the club, left hand at the top, right hand in the middle of the grip, this head down at the ground slightly. Now what I want you to do from here is simply pull the handle up and left as that club comes down. You're gonna feel how much that makes your hips rotate. You're gonna feel how high that makes you feel like you're getting your left hip compared to your normal push down into that left foot through impact. If we can get you the feeling of this action of hands coming up and left, left hip coming up and left as you hit the ball, you'll manage the face, you'll get more rotation into impact nine times out of 10, 9.9 .9 times out of 10 for students, their strikes, their power, just like jump with this action. So once you've done the drill a couple of times, same ideas as you come in to hit the ball, you're gonna feel like you're getting up out of that left leg, left hips really pushing up into this corner. And then you're gonna hit one and see what that does to your shape shots, to your directions, to your strikes. And if we look at swing cat, you're gonna start to see much more opening up with your hips at impact. 
you're going to see better peaks if you measured in the ground, which is going to equate to some good club paths and some good shots. Then we've got the wheat loaders. So the people who don't coil on the way back to give themselves much chances of getting out of their own way on that downswing. So the way I go back, the way I turn my body on the way back or not, so if I'm a weak loader really moving on to the outside of the right foot, right knee kind of bows away, if I was to really rotate for me, I'm gonna get in a lot of trouble bottoming out early, fat and thin kind of shots. So again, for these kind of people, you're gonna get it's a real swaying action to try and reach the ball. Let's get inside. Let's start using the ground a bit better, using your swing in a more forceful way to try and get you actually rotating rather than just swaying. Let's get rid of that weak load, get you stronger in that backswing, which will allow you to get some rotation in that downswing. So I'm going to give you a simple drill to get rid of this kind of weak load onto the right, often called a swaying, those kind of ideas. This right side kind of breaks down, weight goes very much to the outside of the right leg. You often see like bent left arms, those kind of things. Can't rotate from here, got to shift to hit that ball. Again, remember, if you spend all your time just going to the right, to the left, thinking in two dimensions with weight shift, you haven't got much time for torque or horizontals. We use my 52 degree wedge. This drill is best done off the golf course or at the range, not hitting balls and then trying to replicate into a shot. So I've just got a seven iron. I'm gonna work out where my right foot is. So it's there. I'm gonna put my 52 degree wedge on the floor, club out at about 45 degree angle. Then I'm gonna step onto that wedge, but with my heel. So it's under my right foot heel. You can see what happens, it pushes that club up into the air. What I want you to do is just put the club on the ground by lifting your heel of your right foot. So what you're gonna find now is you've got a bit of a runway to start the backswing. Obviously this is a drill, so it's an exaggeration. You wouldn't start with your right foot in the air, but you're gonna get the feeling of how to coil better on the backswing with what happens to this shaft. So I'm gonna start turning, bring the club back. I've gone past the wedge. As soon as my hands and the head of the club get past the wedge, I'm gonna start loading into that heel, rotating my hips, feeling like I'm pushing that wedge, literally crushing it into the ground. You can see what's happened now. The wedge handle has come up. So if I stay here and rotate, I'm not gonna be able to hit this ball. So what I want you to do is you start your downswing. Again, this is good for off course practice. Slowly start down, keeping that wedge up in the air. So pushing down on that heel. And then when your arms get to about parallel to the ground, we're gonna go rotate and push up onto that left, which lets the club drop back down and allows you to swing through. I would be doing this on the range. So literally try and sequence as fast as you can without hitting the club. Club goes past, bring that up, down and up to let the club come down. And then moving the wedge away, try and create the same feelings. You're gonna get a very different hip rotation you're gonna get a very different load on the way back where you're coiling so much more into your right side and then pushing into the right side to then push back onto the left. This is gonna help you reduce horizontals. It'll increase your torque value, so how much you're twisting this way and this way. At the same time, it'll help you get a little bit better on the verticals. So pushing up out of that ground with the torque, which is gonna open up your hips, crisp up those strikes, make you hit the ball a little further, Possibly as well for lots of people with this, I find it moves low point a little bit further forward. Get rid of those fluffy, horrible fats and fins that the wheat load so often causes. And the last one. Some people don't need to rotate their hips or maybe can't. And when it comes to creating some energy, I actually need to use horizontal, so pushing right and left swaying rather than rotating to actually try and get my power onto the ball. If you think about me when I'm 60, 70, 80 years old, I'm not gonna be able to turn the same way I can now when I was younger. So finding the correct power source for your golf is gonna be key to making sure you have the most fun when you're out here playing. Again, let's go inside and see how horizontals can be used if you feel that you are someone who just can't get that body turning. Now horizontals can be a good power source, so this 2D movement, and it's gonna be good for people who can't rotate, who can't jump, can't get out of their left hip. Injuries, certain age brackets as well, might not be able to. Dialing in on some powerful horizontals are what might help you actually play better. So you will have to look slightly different to the other players who are maybe using those two other forces. So a couple of ideas to take away to the course if you need to use this right-left shift as your main power source, I'm gonna start slightly wider with my feet. 
maybe wider than other players with their seven iron because I want a little bit of stability to be able to move right to left. I don't want to stand narrow and start trying to move that way. I'm going to fall over lead foot. It's going to be hard to balance. It's going to make me go more this kind of force and take the horizontals out. Nice wide starts is a good starting point. I'm also going to really splay open my lead foot here. So my front foot is really 45 degrees open. This is going to give me a nice amount of stability when I shift my pressure and my weight onto this front foot because I haven't got the rotation in this hip. Again, a lead foot straight on, even with a wide start, is gonna make it so much harder to balance when you do end up on this lead side. Then I'm gonna push the ball forward in my stance. So by pushing that ball forward up in my stance, it gives me two options. I can start more behind the ball, simply return whatever amounts I can turn and then shift up onto lead foot. Or I could even start now more on my left side. So if you think about it, if I'm starting on my left, that gives me a good option of then pushing onto my right, then back onto my left. Again, whichever one feels more natural for you, whichever one you feel like you can do. Horizontals, pushing from right to left, not having strong jumps, not having massive torque, doesn't mean you have to stop playing golf. So for some people, physically, it's not gonna happen. I can still get nearly 80 mile an hour club head speed, swinging that way. If I can do that when I'm older or less mobile, 136 yard carry on a slightly miss it seven iron. I would be happy trying to do what you see on telly, trying to do what you see the best players in the world do, clearing hips, all those kind of ideas, just might not be the thing that helps you but hurts you. If horizontals is the way for you to get your power, then dial into them and use them as best as you can. Thanks for watching everybody. Let me know if this helps. Uh, post comments down below. As always, let me know if there's any other golf ideas you want me to tackle, shoulder tilts, stop topping drivers, whatever it is, post in that comments down below. Love to hear what you've got to say and let me know at the same time if any of these tips have helped you with your ideas of clearing your hips on the downswing, if it's you who needs to or not, and if any of these ideas do help you, again, hit those comments up. Let me know. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.